Hey guys, it's Rolando Rodriguez with xgains.com where we got workouts that work, eats that satisfy, and everything else you need to change your lifestyle goals. So, I would always getting questions about how, you know, to kickstart a diet. Like what's the first couple of things we should do? Uh, how to get the ball rolling if you will. So, thought we'd talk about that today. What I like to tell everybody is start with baby steps, right? We want fast results and there's times where, you know, you got a little more drastic measures that you can actually take, but let's just say if you want to do one thing to start it off. And I actually believe in, you know, changing one habit at a time and then moving on to changing another habit. So let's say that you're going to change one dietary habit that you're going to do every day. What what would you do? How would you effectively start some type of weight loss or weight maintenance uh, by changing just one thing in your diet. Uh, that's how I would get the ball rolling. Uh, for me, for example, it's whole milk. Now, whole milk within itself is not bad for you really at all. It's got 150 calories. Uh, there's actually studies out there that show that dairy and dairy products help promote weight loss and actually help maintain a healthy weight once you get to where you're trying to be and actually promote some muscle building uh, benefits as well. So dairy is not bad. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about whole milk. I'm not talking about cutting out dairy because I'm not, not going to cut out all the dairy products. I am going to call it out just milk. So why would I choose milk? Uh, it's, it's because what it's associated with, right? So milk to me means what? Milk means uh, café con leche. Now, I don't know how many of you guys know, but I'm of Cuban descent. I'm consider myself Cuban American. I actually am. And uh, Cubans drink café con leche almost every single morning, or every single day. Café con leche is pretty much coffee with milk. Now, you have a glass of milk or a cup of milk, and then you put two teaspoons or two tablespoons. I actually end up putting two tablespoons because I have a rather large, it's probably like a cup to a cup and a half to two cups of milk and then some coffee. Coffee's not bad for you. Uh, some sugar is not bad for you. Milk's not bad for you. So, oh, well, why would I be cutting out milk? Well, I'm not just going to have café con leche by itself most of the time. 99% of the time I'm going to have café con leche with anywhere from four to eight slices of some bean bread. Yeah, I'm 33 years old. I'm a grown man, but I still like white bread. It's good. So, I mean, I eat wheat bread as well, but white bread, hey man, I ain't got nothing against it. I'll either get eight slices, you know, four to eight slices with butter, plenty of butter, some bean bread, not the old-fashioned, or or I don't like the, the thick cut. It's the thin, thin slice one. If not, I'll have a whole loaf of Cuban bread. Now, I'll go to Publix on the weekends if I'm going to eat this, and I'll ask my wife. I'll say, hey, Nina, do you want a slice? Now, I'm talking about like a half-inch slice to an inch slice of the whole loaf of Cuban bread. If she's gonna eat one slice of that, then I'm getting two. She's not gonna eat a whole loaf herself, but I want a whole loaf for me. Now, I'll cut that loaf in half, and I'll pretty much take a half stick of butter on each side, so almost a whole stick, just slather it with butter, and then toast that thing. And it's delicious, in my opinion. Um, I don't think there's anything better in life, or actually, Let's be honest, there's a couple things better in life. But one of the best things in life is to bite into a buttery piece of toast. It's awesome. Now, if I don't have cafe con leche, nine times out of ten, I'm not eating a whole loaf of Cuban bread. So now let's get the bread out the way. Drop the milk. So I'm not going to drink the bread that's associated with the milk. But what else is associated with milk for me? Pretty much any dessert. I'm a dessert fiend, right? So my desserts, what I'm talking about, I love chocolate chip cookies and whole milk. I can down a whole Chips Ahoy bag in one sitting, and typically I do. Or I go to Costco and get the, uh, Costco sells these chocolate chip cookies with chocolate chip chunks that they have from their bakery. Excuse me, my nose itches, I have no idea why. But these chocolate chip chunks, and there's about 18 in, 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 you know, for six bucks, which is great, but I'll have s about six of them in a serving. Now, Six of these cookies is 1,200 calories. A whole box of Chips Ahoy is about 1,200 calories. So I'm not going to eat the chocolate chip cookies or I'm not going to eat more than one without milk. Now, if I have milk, I'm eating them, you know, six of the whole box. 
and that's 1200 calories in one sitting. By eliminating just milk, I've eliminated 1200 calories at least two or three times a week, right? With chocolate chip cookies. Also the chocolate croissants, when they're in season, because Costco, I don't know what their problem is, but they stop making them and their chocolate croissants are insane. They're delicious. Um, and I would eat two or three of those. And that's, you know, six, 800 calories, you know, uh, y ten cuidado, which means be careful. Sorry, I just thought in Spanish, but it, be careful. It might be 900 calories. So 800 calories on the, you know, for three of those is on the safe side. Now, if I remove milk, I'm not eating the white bread. I'm not eating the chocolate chip cookies. I'm not eating the chocolate croissant. I'm also not eating donuts from Publix. I really like the chocolate covered donuts at uh, Publix, the chocolate glazed donuts. They're half a dozen glazed, half a dozen chocolate for like six bucks, which is awesome. And sometimes it's on manager specials for four bucks. Uh, you're pretty much losing if you don't get it at that point. I'll have four donuts at night with a glass of milk. If I don't have milk, I'm either eating one donut or I'm not eating any of the donuts. We got donuts, we got croissants, chocolate croissants, we got chocolate chip cookies, we got white whole loaves of bread, and what else do we have with milk? I associate milk with cheesecake. If I don't have milk, I probably won't eat a piece of cheesecake. So by simply removing whole milk, I've removed easily, let's just say that I eat meat in this two or three times a week, almost 3,000 calories. Now if I remove milk from my diet, I'm saving 3,000 to 4,000 calories. If you want to play it safe, even 2,500 calories a week by simply removing milk. So the deal is here is to select an item that you associate with various other foods. Let's say that it's Coke, for example. Like, let's say you like Coke with French fries so much that if you don't have Coke or whatever other soda you want, even diet soda, and that's a whole nother, don't get me started with the diet, we'll talk about that later, diet sodas. Um, but let's just say any soda, diet or not, if you're going to eat those with fries, and you associate the fries, you know, goodness with the Coke or the soda, if you don't have the soda, you're not going to eat that many fries. You might not even eat the fries. I associate Coke with Mexican food. If I don't have my favorite Mexican joint, uh, food with coca-cola might as well not have the meal I'll go eat somewhere else I go eat Italian where I don't have to have coke and I eat a little bit less I don't eat as many chips I don't eat pretty much as many calories so by simply saying you know if I'm gonna remove coke or soda I'm not gonna eat at these certain places because I now you have mind you you have to be as anal retentive as I am but there's certain things if you think about it that you like paired together so remove one of those pairs it doesn't have to be the item that is most calorie dense in your diet. It just has to be the item that will be most effective at eliminating the, you know, your weekly total calorie count to the lowest uh, amount possible. Be that, you know, if you eliminate cheese because you eat cheese with all these different type of things that are high in calorie, the cheese might not be necessarily bad for you, but the other things that you associate with the cheese all of a sudden aren't on the plate anymore because the cheese isn't. So when I'm trying to either you know, really get lean or lose the last couple of pounds that I'm trying to get, you know, uh, off that are always the hardest. This is the type of decisions and the things that I look at in my eating plan or my diet and eliminate. If I'm maintaining or, you know, either just trying to lose a couple of pounds, I'll either add some more cardio or, you know, um, I typically remove Coke from the equation, milk comes after Coke. So, you know, you'll sit there and you'll have a hierarchy of items that you start to eliminate, but really think about the, the, the effectiveness of that item. It's not just because you eat it once or twice a day, but what do you eat with that item? So, or maybe you have one item that's like a whole carrot cake and the carrot cake is insanely dense in calories and you eat that once a week. If you eliminate that thing, that's, I mean, a slice of carrot cakes Anywhere you go has got a, a pretty good amount of, of calories, especially if it's if it's any carrot cake worth its weight in gold. Um, Twenty whatever. That's how I would start it off. That's how I would get the ball rolling on any new diet plan, any new you know weight management or weight loss uh, approach that I'm trying to take. I would say, hey, what's the one item that'll give me the most bang for my buck?
in terms of its association with other foods. Um, and you find that item eliminated, and there you go. You start the ball rolling. Do that for a couple of weeks, see what happens. Don't just do it for one single week, do it for a couple of weeks, um, and see how you, you know, what the scale says two weeks after that. And then you start eliminating another thing if you hit a plateau, but baby steps. We'll get in, you know, in these video blogs more and more into diet tips, exercise workouts, um, routines, lifestyle changes that will really get you where you want to be. It's about establishing a new lifestyle. So getting an eating plan and getting a workout plan that you can live by day in and day out for the rest of your life. When we reach that point, that's where you know you really got something good going on. So anyways, hit us up, let us know what you think, what diet, what dietary item you would remove from your diet to be most effective for you, because it's gonna be different for everybody else, and maybe why you would remove that item. And if you really make that list, you're gonna see uh, how effective this can be. So let us know what that, you know, item is for you. List it down below if you'd like. Hit us up on our website if you got any questions, www.xgains.com. That's X dash, not the word dash, but the, sim, you know, the symbol dash, gains.com. The website's gonna be down below. Ask us any questions you like. We always answer questions for free. Uh, no strings attached. We love helping people out and hopefully we'll uh, continue this more often than not. Hope you guys have a fantastic week. Peace.